Debbie with Kip's Corner. Welcome back. And if you're new, welcome. All right. Puzzled birds. I've got all of the birds. All the boards are done. There are 17 of them. All the bird puzzle pieces are done. And both the birds and the boards have a spray coating of a, a matte finish on them just to seal them up and, um, you know, give them extra protection. And so they're, these are all ready to start assembling. I have two completely done. I did, I did the little hummingbird and so he's done. And he has a little metal number here and a little spiral ring and a key and some book page behind him and fibers and some fabric. And so he is, he's done. And then this guy is also done. I forget what this one is called. And some metal pieces and rusted pieces and, you know, just, again, same thing, pieces around. And so I'm creating sort of um, almost a frame around them in the background with some of the board coming through still and then the bird being on top. And so now what I'm going to do, and I've got two here that I'm playing with the layout. So on this one and this one, nothing is glued down. I'm just playing with putting pieces down. And what I've got sort of <laughs> surrounding me are pieces of paper and fabric and rust metal and um, just a bunch of stuff. I um, tried not to put too, too much around me because I don't want to overwhelm myself. But um, I thought what I would do is do one with you and just show you my process and kind of what I, what I think about when I'm putting these together. The very first thing I want to do is I want to raise this bird so that he's higher than um, all the other pieces and the other pieces are kind of tucked in and around him underneath. And so I just have some pieces of um, scrap chipboard. Um, you know, it's, it's fairly, fairly thick. And so what I'm doing, a couple things. I'm putting pieces on the back but I'm also looking at these pieces that are kind of out here by themselves. And these are vulnerable to extra breaking. Here's another one here where there's really not, you know, there's really only kind of one thing connecting them. They're glued, but that doesn't mean they're not vulnerable. So first thing I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do is put some pieces back here. I need a skinnier one. I've got some skinny ones here. Um, and I'm going to make sure that I get some of the chipboard raised up back here. Now, I don't want to cover this entire, entire piece. I just want parts of it covered. And the reason is, is because I want to be able to tuck things underneath. So here's an example. I have the extra here and the glue here is connecting. You know, this is sort of extra connecting here on this odd man out piece. Same with this piece and this one down here. And then I just have a bigger piece in the middle. And so I've got room here to tuck things up underneath should I want to. So, <clears throat> so that's what I'm gonna do first. And this is just, I'm just using art glitter glue. Um, and basically I just kinda take my scraps and take a look, you know, about how big do I want this? I think I want this about like this. And then let's see if I can find another piece that's about the same thickness, close enough. And then I'm just going to do the same thing here. And I'm just going to glue these two together and then I'm going to glue them on my board. And I'm using two because one thickness just wasn't enough. So if you have a really thick piece of, oh, um, you know, a cardboard box or something that you're, um, dismantling or just thicker pieces of chipboard. It wouldn't matter. It doesn't matter what you use. You could use corrugated cardboard back here. Um, and if yours is thicker, you wouldn't necessarily need to. Just depends. I'm going to put one here. And so I'm intentionally getting a part of this board and glue over at least part of where that seam is, where those two pieces go together. So nothing about this back piece has to be neat. It won't be seen at all. Okay, 
Now I think, as soon as I get this last piece on, this is ready to start playing with. So I don't, I think the key here, I guess the biggest advice I can give anyone is don't overthink it. Just go with your gut instinct and just go. Um, play around. And the first thing I usually do is kind of set the bird in there the where about where I think I'm going to want him to be. This has some great crackle on it done here, so I don't want to cover that up necessarily. So, you know, I think, and there's sort of a, he's, you know, following this line here. And so I really like that. So he's probably going to go about there. That doesn't mean I won't change my mind. Next thing I'm going to do is just start grabbing pieces. And one thing I'm doing is paying attention to the color of the bird. If I have any pieces that um, complement or go with that, for example, I've got these old metal lids. There's some blue in there, and here's one with some red. I think I like the blue better. It's not the same color blue, but that's okay. And so I'm just gonna start laying down. Let's see, this is too tall to fit underneath. So if I use this tucked up underneath somewhere, um, I would have to Yeah, I would have to use more paper underneath. So that may not be a piece that I use. I might set that aside and maybe I won't use it. Um, or maybe if I did want to use it, I would use it not tucked, but maybe just um, butted up next to. I'm not in love with it, so I'm gonna set that aside. So I'm basically looking for on these bigger boards, I'm, I'm looking for my bigger pieces first. Once I have those, then, and I'm looking for something in particular that I have misplaced and I thought might work really well. <laughs> That's the other thing is I kind of know exactly what I have in my, there it is, in my space. Um, I, again, I, I did, I picked um, a fairly small amount. And so that's a thought. So we, so I start with kind of a bigger piece on these bigger boards. And from there, I'm gonna kind of branch out um, and just start picking pieces up. Some of them will, will absolutely work. Some of them won't. And I just kind of set them down and move them around a little bit and just get a feel for, you know, I put that there, but I've got this piece. Do I like this better? No, not necessarily. <laughs> But do I like this better over here? Maybe, um, maybe. <clears throat> and so that I just keep going on in that fashion. And so I'm looking at, oh, I've got, this is a bag of metal detector finds that I got from my friend, Michelle Scott. And there's some nice big pieces in here. Some of this might be too big. Well, that doesn't move anymore. Um, but, you know, is it on there somewhere? Oh, that's kind of cool. That would work too. Because it's lower. If I could get that to, if I could get that to be more of a 90 degree angle. <clears throat> Now this is a skinnier board. I have fatter boards too. And if I used this on a fatter board, it absolutely would work because it wouldn't. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll keep that, set that aside for a fatter board. My boards are from all over the place, all different places. And so they're, you know, they're just different thicknesses and stuff. Um, what's this? I have no idea what's in here. What's this? That's kind of cool. I don't know what it is, but it's cool. Um, but I don't want circle and circle. And I do really like that piece there. So... Mm. 
So let's think about, do I want any fabric back here? Mm, I've got some rusty fabric. Well, let's see. That's kind of complimentary, or it could be. Let's, let's chop this up a little bit. I'll rip it up. Does it go on here somewhere? Maybe. Maybe. And so it could take me, <laughs> you know, I like I said, I try not to overthink it. But even without overthinking it, it could take me um, a while to put one of these together. And that's okay. I have some of this sitting on this one over here. This is, this will go underneath. It's just sitting on top right now. But this is fun stuff. So let me tear some in sort of a knot. And so you can kind of see what I mean by tucking. If I use that, I really do want a bigger piece though. So let's try a little bit bigger piece. This is just paper, so it rips nicely. That's kind of cool. Okay. Um, I looked in there. It's all very brown. How about looking at some springs? Not, not real big one. Let's get this off of here. The springs are joining together here. That would get lost. Oh, I like the way that sort of I like the way it won't stay, but I like that. <clears throat> I want to be sure and keep my bird. Some of these birds, they're not necessarily straight up, but there's sort of line, sort of striations, if you will, in the back of this puzzle on this background. I don't know if it shows up on camera, but, but they are fairly straight lined. You know, they kind of do a horizontal thing. And so that's what I'm using to help guide me with um, getting keeping him straight this is too long so let's rip some of this off that's a possibility yeah, i'm not in love with that though let's set that aside what if there's some book page over here I do like using book page on the book pages on these. That's not really the right size. This is a little handwritten notebook, pieces of a handwritten notebook. Hmm. No, not what I'm looking for either. I don't know what I'm looking for here. Here's a metal. Oh, this is a neat piece. That might be fun. Once I've determined where everything goes, um, I will from there, I will determine whether or not I want to change the color of any of them. So on this piece, for example, this little um, metal piece here was silver and black, but I had the rusty spring and the key was a little bit of a, kind of a brass color. And so what I did is I took this down with, um, covered it with black gesso and then used my, let's see, when I, I used Bronze Age um, metallique wax and I went over all three pieces with some of the Bronze Age, just a little bit on the spring, but completely covered this one. And so that brought those three pieces together and tied them together. On um, this one, I kind of did the same thing. This frame in the background here um, was just, is this, uh, I just had one, what did I do with it? It's this, it's one of these silver frames. So you can see I completely changed it, put black gesso on it first and then the metal ink wax on top. And then I used the same 
um, these two pieces were sort of a really shiny bright gold same thing um, and I used the same color wax on all three pieces with black gesso on the base and again that brought them together in more of a subtle background and so well, that's what I'm going to think about doing here um, you know if this is here then um, you know, do I change the color? Even like this is bright, shiny silver, and this is sort of an antiqued nickel. And so then the thought is, okay, well, I could bring them closer together, antique up this one, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so I like the way that's starting to go. I like the way that's where that's headed. I want to get some texture in the background and I've got it other than this this paper I don't know what it's called it's used in packaging other than that I've got some other type of um, this is a piece of uh, and I used that here on the background of this one it's a uh, palm tree pine palm tree fiber feel like maybe there could be some of that there see now I'm not liking I'm beginning to not like that but I am beginning to like this and so I'm just going to keep playing. It's just hard for me to explain how I do this other than to just say, just go for it. Just play, just keep playing. It, it Once you kind of get to a point where you like what you see, um, you know, so I'm gonna keep playing with this and bring this down maybe. Maybe that comes down. Maybe that's not there at all. Um, maybe that's fabric under there. And this, and see if this is, and see I'm, I'm butting up against my cardboard, right? So what I can do is cut this and just make it smaller. My Tim Holtz scissors will cut metal pretty well. So I'm going to Chop this off right here and right here. And now, now I can get up underneath there better. I don't know, maybe I do want that there. Maybe I do. Take a little bit more off of this. Here we go. I can get in there. That's where I want it. That's where I want it. Um, I still like this, I think, here. And so all of the pieces sort of touch each other. Um, that's my style. Uh, I don't, when I'm putting, um, assembling pieces or creating collages, I don't do, I don't tend to put something off by itself unless it needs to be to help tell the, get the, the, tell the story, if you will. But as a general rule of thumb, when I'm creating something like this, I'm creating a cluster, a great big cluster where it's all kind of connected. And, and I'm also looking at colors, like in this, the, the hummingbird, that's a hummingbird. <laughs> the hummingbird has a lot of sort of that white in there. And so that's where these fibers come into play. On this one, while this isn't the exact color, it's sort of in that family and it's got glue all over it, but that's okay too. That kind of helps, that just works together. But this little piece here is pulling in some of this darker color here a little bit. Again, not the, the exact same color, but um, and on this one that I don't have glued down, that I'm just playing with, 
Um, he's got a lot of that orange in there that, that is sort of in this rusted fabric back here. So, uh, and the rust works kind of in some of those really darker areas. And so that's, that's that. And on this one, these fibers here very much, I think, resemble the texture on his, uh, of his feathers and the colors. And so, yeah. That's basically what I'm gonna do, is just keep playing um, and keep thinking about this. I want something underneath that, kind of like what I did on the other one. So maybe that's a piece of lace. Let's see, let's see, I've got some right here. It might not be the exact lace I need. And I've got a big pile of fibers over here and they're all um, commingling, okay. So what if, what if, yes, this is an old doily that I cut up. And yes, I cut it up. What if we take a piece of that? Let's see, let's cut about right here. And let's just cut this off. Oh, well, I don't think I'm in camera, sorry. These are just little strings holding this together here. So it's pretty easy to cut up. And let's go right in the middle like we did on that other one. All right, let's see what we think about that. And I don't have a problem, you know, like in this case, like cutting that and then not using it because um, because I just will set it aside and use it for another project. Let's try this. Yeah, that's not so bad. Something like that. But I don't want that straight edge there. Well, maybe I don't. Let's just, let's not make any rash decisions here. I do want this on here. Oh, see, maybe. If there's a piece like that. Okay, see, I got my bird all askew. Good. I'm gonna set that aside. I'm still not sure if I want that on there. This could go on top of that, actually even a little bit under that, and that sort of gets rid of that, that uh, straight edge there. Okay. And this bumps all, you know, and the pieces aren't flat, of course, until you glue them down and all of that. So it is a little bit of a challenge to um, to play around and, and get an idea of what it's going to look like. But I do still like the idea of this one being on here. But what if that's more of a end of the statement kind of thing? Okay, I would not keep this silver. I would definitely turn that down, probably use the Bronze Age. Um, or, like I said before, I would use, you know, something, my antique silver or whatever, so that it goes with this. And if I did that, then I would want my spiral to be, well, maybe the spiral's not on there. Maybe there's one of these on there. That's not so bad. Okay, let's see. How about some keys? I've got a big old package of key, old keys here. I actually have two big packages of old keys. So let's see what's in this one. Um, that one's kind of cool. something to connect to mm, no not loving it not loving it what about <clears throat> mm. 
do I need? Nope, don't like that. Too much, too heavy. Um, but do I like it better than this? I think I might. This has got a really nice flat blank spot right here. And it's screaming for something sort of round. So, um, <laughs> This is, like I said, this is not a fast process at all. Not at all. There's another little set of Oh, I like that. I like that. Okay. Now does this come up here? into play and maybe go on top of it. Maybe. Maybe. Now I'm beginning to like what's going on here. I've got a little, a, a little ways to go. And I actually like the silver kind of tones with, with the color of the bird. And so that actually almost begs me to find something else down here Hmm, what else might work? Would I wanna put some book page down there? This is, a, this is from a book that is, was made out of, it's rag paper. Um, but I don't wanna cover up. Okay, that's a possibility. If I do that, I may want I may want some paper up underneath here. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Now what I need to do is focus my attention kind of right here. Again, I really love this crackle. And and I don't normally, you know, fall in love with the background so much so that um, but I really want to kind of keep this spot right here open. It just zoom, it zeroes in. Okay, so that said, what about, I've already used a piece of this. A lot of the things that I have where, you know, I've got multiples or whatever, I will absolutely use, um, you know, I've got a piece of this up here. I will absolutely use, oh yes, I think that might work. All right, I'm gonna break this back here and I just pop it with my fingers um, and let the, let the break happen. Okay. I kind of like that. Kind of like where that's going. All right. And I did exactly what I said I didn't want to do. I covered up <laughs> part of but I could there we go that's better okay let me just I'm going to shorten this and just break it Might have just shortened it too much. 
Oh, maybe not. Yeah, I think I shortened it too much. I liked that it came all the way out to the edge. So, is this better? This is actually shorter. It keeps moving. Nope, let me get another one. I have a ton of these. Uh, let's see, do I have one here? I don't have a ton of them, I have, but I have plenty. And they're very brittle, so they break quite easily. All right, let's try to get this. And because of the way I break them, which is the way I want them broken, Ooh, I like that little pop of red right there. There we go. Ta-da! Actually, I don't like the pop of red. He's the wrong, the wrong color red. There we go. I might clean off just a tiny, tiny piece of that maybe, but once I glue all this down, that actually, that size actually might work just fine. Okay, so now I kind of like what I've got going on here. I'm gonna wanna put something in here. Um, and I think to tie the, the round, the circles that are over here, I'm gonna put something that is circular there. Now I would normally just pop right over to a rusty washer. However, in this case, Oh, actually, wait a minute. Um, I think I'm going to keep these pieces fairly silver-ish. That's not bad. He doesn't show up very well. Um, this is the lid. This is the lid to a watch part. It's got glue on it. Does that fit? Hmm. Maybe. It needs to be just a little bit smaller. And I might have to, uh, well, actually, here's the back of a, I think that's another little lid to a watch part. And that might be perfect. Ta-da. Okay. I think this one is pretty much ready to start gluing. So I'm just going to set it aside. But, but hopefully I've given you an idea of, um, you know what it is I'm doing and I'm taking my time these don't go quickly <laughs> they're very time-consuming um, but now I'm ready I've got three that I'm ready to really start getting serious about gluing down and you don't want to see me glue things down so what I'm gonna do is keep working on these keep playing um, and continuing to try to not overthink it and um, get these glued down, work on a few more, and then I may come back and show you another set. I'll definitely come back and show you the full set when they're completely completed. Um, but I don't, honestly, I don't know how long that's gonna take me. It might take a, a hot minute for me to sort of get 17 of them done. I've got two done, I've got two. Um, and I'll post nice close-up shots of these five in particular on my Instagram account so that you can kind of see, and as I get them done, I will continue to post. But that's it, that's all I'm doing. I'm just gathering up my metal and my rust and my you know pieces, my ephemera pieces, some old book pages, um, laces and fabrics, and just textures, and just playing. Again, don't overthink it. Um, you, you wanna be happy with it, but as soon as you get to a point where you're like, hey, that doesn't look so bad, stop, walk away. Don't fuss with it. Um, a project like this would take a year if you kept sort of fussing with it. So just glue it down and go on. Um, and that's what I did with both of these and I'm happy with them. Um, I think the hummingbird is adorable and I really like the way this turned out too. And this piece, by the way, did I glue it down? No, see this piece moves. Um, I like it at that angle because it follows the angle of the bird's back but, but um, that's the, the very end of the ruler, or the, it's kind of in the middle, I guess, where that piece is. But anyway, 
that's what I'm doing. And that is the Puzzled Birds project. So like I said, I'll be back once, whoops, um, once I break everything, I'll come back and tell you that I'm not going to show them to you. No, I will be back once I get more done. Um, but if you're, if you do a project like this, you know, just, just play, just have fun. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll be back. Bye-bye.